Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Tax Matters. I am Chamaka Ohaochi. We begin this episode by reminding all companies whose accounting year ends is January to December that they have only a few days to file and pay their company's income tax alongside their education tax and other associated taxes like police trust fund levy because June 30 is here already. Do not be caught on the wrong side of the law. Fulfill your civic duty. So much is happening in the tax industry in Nigeria. At the end of May 2023, the much-awaited Finance Act 2023 came into being. In fact, it was signed into law by former President Muhammadu Buhari on his very last day in office. And last episode, we began dissection of the act with our guide being Mr. Albert Florenshaw, Managing Consultant, Pedable Professional Services. You know so well the superlative performance of the FRS in the year 2022, even as we know that the service continues to make giant strides in the year 2023. We have decided to do a media review of the activities of the service in the year 2023. And so, we have sat down with Mr. Muhammad Nami, Executive Chairman FRS, Chairman Joint Tax Board, and President Qatar. We'll begin this episode with the exclusive interview. Executive Chairman, thank you for joining us on Tax Matters. Thank you. You're welcome to my office once more. Thank you, sir. Sir, so much has happened in the past few months, and we think it's still in order to start by saying congratulations. Congratulations on the sterling performance of the service in the year 2022, talking about the collection of 10.1 trillion naira, the highest ever in the history of FRS. Congratulations on the award as the Leadership Newspaper Public Service Person of the Year 2022. And congratulations on your ICANN Merit Award. Thank you. Now, sir, the 2022 task collection by the service was the highest revenue collection ever made by any agency or institution of government. But now we are in 2023. Let's talk about 2023. What is the revenue collection target for the service in the year 2023? Government target and the service target. Let me start by appreciating the entire staff of FRS and uh, the teaming taxpayers across all sectors, including the ministries, department, and agencies for government. Let me also appreciate stakeholders like the media, the civil society organizations, the same partners, including international organizations like um, CATA, ETAF, and WATAF, and the rest, multilateral agencies, including United Nations, for the support they've given us, and also the international community for the automatic exchange of information that we have shared in the year 2022, and continue to share up to date, and we'll continue to do that going forward. The task target for this year for government is 11 trillion and uh, we as FRS added additional 1 trillion bringing the target to 12 trillion so currently that is what the fields are working towards achieving for the nation so that is the total target for the year 2023. All right, sir. Now, what measures will be put in place to achieve this target? Because this is media ready. How far so far are you on course? Well, we started the year with two good resolutions to continue from where we stopped in 2022. So what it is that we have done in 2022, we ask ourselves questions and say, let's continue. And that has impacted all that have impacted positively on our collection. So we told ourselves, let's continue from where we stopped in December on those things. Then we also review what we have done last year that was not working for us. So we set up a team to look at those things. And 
we also started the year with two resolutions outside those other two that we did for 2022 operation. This year, we feel we should give one to taxpayer and we should take one for us as tax administrators. We introduce a one minute tax clearance process or module, which was effective from January 1st. If you are not owing any tax liability on tax format platform, you don't need to come to FRS. From the comfort of your office, even when you are even driving your car, if you have a driver, or if you are in the plane, provided you are not the pilot, or you are sitting right in the comfort of your bedroom, you apply. The process of applying, because of the computer efficiency of the person doing the application, can take one minute, two minutes, or even up to ten minutes. But the moment you drop the administration in our process, or in, our, in the tax box, it takes 60 seconds for you to get your tax clearance back. Why we have done this? I came with the pen in my mind to FRS in 2019. I did apply for tax clearance certificate on behalf of my client in that particular year. Some applications were filed in the first quarter of that year. But unfortunately, I did not get the tax clearance certificate for about eight of the companies until I was announced as chairman of FRS. So the implication of that is that if my clients have urgent businesses to do with those tax clearance certificates, one, it is coming very late, two, they would have lost a lot of opportunity. And bear in mind also that they were not owing taxes. So we have done that based on the experience I had as a tax consultant. Then the second one was the issue also that was not in favor of the system itself, which is the issue of uh, impute VAT claim. So we also came up with a model in tax program that while we are giving the taxpayers the benefit of enjoying one minute tax clearance certificate, they so also should be able to support FRS so that as input claims are made, they are able to do it very quickly, not in the manner that we used to do to ask them to bring paper and evidences. All we need is a schedule to show that while I was doing business, I had in following companies deducted a certain amount from me providing us the details for those companies, including their TIN and their address and the nature of business. The moment that is done, we give you automatic credit for the input VAT you have claimed. But if before now you have been making fictitious claims, you will not be in a position to make such claims again. Then we also review our technological uh, innovation processes and say, what is it that the tax format team is doing that they are doing very well, and what is it that they are not doing very well? So we decided to improve on those processes. We have decided to invest in more technology so that in, in software or models that will help in both tax audits, tax operations, and purpose of accounting for tax collection so that we are able to expand our tax base. So the essence of that is that the more of these tax people and taxpayers that we're able to bring on board, the better for the tax collections we are going to be making. Then we also have reviewed the operational inter intelligence strategy data mining department. And we are working with them together with, in conjunction with the CBN and money deposit bank to generate more taxpayer information and intelligence that we are going to use to better our process. You recall what we did yesterday. It's another initiative. The focus now is that 
what we currently have that is giving us 10.1 trillion, or that has given us 10.1 trillion last year, is largely as a result of three factors. Voluntary compliance by taxpayers, the little intelligence that we get, we, we are, we've been getting through the department that we created, and the huge taxpayer education. So what we now have done is to say, okay, if this is already working, why don't we improve on these things that we, have do we are doing? So let's now move a step forward and also after improving on this process and focusing on the informal sector. Before now, this sector, though very large and provide very good employment opportunity to our teaming youth, have not been paying their taxes. So the focus now is to work with the, the associations of the relevant sectors of the informal sector, from the car dealing uh, and the car dealers and importers to market traders in our marketplaces, to farmers that are buying or farming and importing or buying and exporting, or those that are farm to sell in our local market and those that are exporting their productions. So we want to work with them. The excess is not to give them additional responsibility or additional uh, burden of paying t additional taxes. But why we're working with this is that one, we're able to come up with a huge register where we're going to bring them into tax net. We're able to have a data that will help government also for purpose of planning then we are also able to address the issue of multiple taxation. So this is, or these are a few of the strategies that we have adopted in the year in making sure that by the grace of God, we do not only meet the 12 trillion internal target set for our staff, but see if we can surpass it. All right, thank you very much. That's very commendable. Now I would like to know if the other areas the service I mean, is looking towards to, to generate more revenue for the government to fulfill its objectives of providing infrastructural development for the populace. Yeah. Now, it's just to continue from where I stopped about the informal sector. You know how huge the sector is. You understand? So the challenge we have now is that some of them have not grown to become taxpayers. What do I mean by that? We have Finance Act 2019 that have exempted uh, taxpayers with turnover of 25 million naira and below from paying taxes or acting as agent of collection. Then we also have issues of some of the product or services being exempted from paying taxes. So. The first challenge we have is to do the enumeration and categorize the informal sector players in such a manner that we are able to identify do these two key constraints. And if we are able to identify this and we are able to sieve them out from the many informal sectors, some of them are actually not formal, some of them are formal because if you are not a formalized business, you will not be in a position to export anything out of Nigeria. If you are not a formalized business, you are not going to be able to import goods into Nigeria. So you have to be, you seem to be doing a formal business before even LCs are open. So we are going to focus on those people that are not currently paying taxes. We are not going to do it in a very harsh way. We are going to work with them in a manner that we give them the advantage of doing so. One, that are self-imposed tax agents, that are touts, that are miscreants in the marketplaces, for instance, collecting or driving people, blocking roads, causing a lot of havoc to transporters. So what we want to do is to make sure that we handle this with the security agencies, particularly the police and civil defense corps to make sure that these people are kept far away 
from marketplaces. They are kept far away from the roads so that people can, are in a position to move their goods from one location to the other without encountering any of the problems on the road. So that people, or a person for instance that will leave Maiduguri, wanting to come to Lagos, will not pay 20 times before he get to Lagos. So if we have this, we are going to be in a position to build confidence in the mind, in the mind of the informal sector players. Then number two, if we are able to do that, we are even going to be able to in, in block the leakages that heat at all. Uh, has been a, a problem to that sector because you bear at the back of your mind or you bear me witness that the taxes collected by touts, miscreants, and serving post agent end up in private pockets. So those leakages were going to drop. And I can assure you, it's so huge. If we are able to successfully do that, I can assure you in the year 2024, we should be doing two times what we are doing today because a lot of monies have been paid, but to private pockets and government continue to borrow to fund the budgetary requirements. So if we block these leakages, by the grace of God, the sky is going to be the beginning of our journey at FRS. Yes, great initiatives. This interview with Executive Chairman FRS continues next episode. I'm a very busy man. My business involves a lot of traveling and I interface with lots and lots of people and organizations. Tax compliance used to be a big drag on my business. It was time consuming and very costly. But now, no more. Introducing the FIRS Tax Pro Max, the truly fully end-to-end -end tax administration solution for companies' income tax, value-added tax, petroleum profits tax, and all other tax types. For fast, efficient, and convenient end-to-end -end tax experience, log on to www.taxpromax.firs.gov.ng. Tax Pro Max has turned things around for me. It is fast, user-friendly, and cost-effective. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Thank you for staying with us. We'll move on with more from the seminal interview on the Finance Act 2023. Mr. Albert Shaw is our guide. Mr. Shaw, welcome once again. It's been a pleasure. Now, sir, kindly take our viewers through some of the major provisions of this Finance Act. Now, moving to custom and excise, okay, one significant provision that came up is the fact that um, a 0.5% custom duty is now to be applied on uh, eligible goods imported from outside Africa. And of course, it is expected that the Minister in charge of Finance will give us a, a guideline as to what constitutes those eligible goods. The only uh, thing there is the fact that the proceed from this 0.5% custom duty is to be applied to pay a subscription and other obligation to multilateral and uh, other African uh, organizations. So it is just a way of uh, generating revenue for specific purpose. This Finance Act provides that all services and mentions specifically telecommunication services are now to be uh, liable to the duty of excise, okay, as may be, you know, designated by the, uh, by the president. Again, there is a small provision under the personal income tax, which is the fact that um, premium on contract for deferred annuity, you know, in, you know, when you insure your life and the life of your wife, ordinarily um, there are available deduction from your salary in calculating your uh, uh, your income in calculating your personal income tax. Okay, so recently the provision around uh, a contract for deferred annuity was removed, but it has now been reinstated. But the only restriction is the fact that when you pay premium to deferred annuity, you cannot withdraw it within five years. If you withdraw it, the relief will not be available. Okay, I think this is also good for the insurance industry particularly. Another significant provision that we have is um, the petroleum Profit Tax Act, you know, certain changes were made to be able to align, you know, the uh, penalty regime, 
in the uh, PIA of 2020 with the existing Petroleum Profit Tax Act. There's also a specific provision on decommissioning uh, cost, provision for decommissioning that was not allowed under the PPTA, but was allowed under the PIA. That has now been amended so that uh, such provision for decommissioning and abandonment, you know, will be available as a deduction for companies operating in the, uh, in the oil industry. Now, if you go to stamp duty, stamp duty, you know, it was uh, being consumed by the collector, which means for federal government, it goes to the federation account, while for state, the state takes care of uh, their own stamp duty collected. So this new provision is to the effect that um, they are now being treated as if it's like the VAT sharing formula. So which means, regardless of your, of uh, the quantum of VAT, I mean stamp duty that is generated, the fund is to be shared on the basis of local government, 35%, uh, state government, 50%, and federal government, 15%. For the education tax, you know, it's been increased again uh, for the opting time uh, from 2.5% of accessible profit to 3%. And the question has been asked as to the justification. But of course, if you go around and see most of our uh, public uh, universities, um, well, maybe that is the justification. As long as we can be sure that this fund is actually being made available to the to the universities, because if they are provided to them, I don't see any reason why the strike will continue. If it is really available and made available to them, then for value-added tax, uh, four provisions were actually uh, introduced in the Finance Act. The first one is the anti-avoidance provision, uh, where it re that relates to uh, artificial or fictitious transaction. Okay, so uh, what the law has said now is that where there are artificial or fictitious uh, provision uh, or transaction, uh, that the tax authority can disregard such transaction and make necessary adjustment in order to counteract the artificial nature of the transaction, uh, particularly where it relates to uh, connected entity or um, when you talk about uh, trust or grant. The second one is the power uh, that uh, has been given to FRS to appoint uh, agent. That has been in the provision before now. But the specific provision that has been included in this particular finance act is the obligation of uh, VAT collection agents, okay, to file returns, you know, by the 14th of the following month. Okay, so if uh, any company has been designated as an agent of FRS for the purpose of withholding VAT, a reverse VAT, on their payments, okay, to their vendors. Instead of paying the vendors and allowing the vendors to go and remit, most of whom don't remit, because of uh, the significant nature of those entities that have been appointed, and so such companies have now been given two obligations, to deduct VAT on, their, on, their, on the payment to their vendors, and to also remit VAT on their own income. The third one has to do with um, um, goods imported into Nigeria that are purchased through the online electronic uh, digital platform like Amazon, okay, operated mostly by non-resident uh, uh, supplier who have been appointed, you know, as agent of FRS for the collection of, uh, of VAT. So for such company, in order to avoid double VAT on such goods, because the goods are coming in through the port, and custom may demand, you know, uh, VAT at the point of entry. Meanwhile, the agents have been designated and are appointed to also withhold VAT. So this provision is, has put that to rest to say that any good that is purchased through such online digital platform, okay, for which the appointed non-resident agent has the obligation to file or to remit the VAT on such goods. Such goods will not be liable to VAT when they are physically brought into Nigeria at the point of entry. So, which means there has to be harmonization between um, the FRS on that and, and the Nigeria Customs Service. And then again, uh, there is a redefinition of what constitutes a building or interest in land, okay? Um, and that provision is to exclude uh, radio and uh, television mass transmission lines, uh, cell towers, vehicles, mobile homes, caravans, and trailers as 
as not forming part of building. So which means transaction on, on those now will be fully liable to, to VAT. But of course, we know that VAT is no longer applicable when it comes to land and building and any form of interest in building, including um, uh, rent. So pretty much, uh, those are the specific provisions in the new Finance Act. Wow. Finance Act 2023, there for you. A total of 11 acts were amended. The effective date of the provisions of the Finance Act 2023 is 1st of May 2023, but trust the FRS for always being on the side of the taxpayer. In a bid to avoid retroactive effects, the FRS has been issuing circulars advising taxpayers on new dates that are more convenient and more taxpayer friendly. We thank Mr. Florencio on your behalf and we thank you, our viewers, for your time. Let's do this again next week, same station, same day of the week and same time of the day. Bye for now.